Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to create this shockwave effect inside of After Effects. Alright, so for this effect you guys will need to download the shockwave overlay from Cinepax. There is a free version that I will link down below in the description so you guys can go ahead and download that and follow along with this tutorial. I do have the full version here so I have one through five of the packs here and as you can see if I just go through one of these things there's tons of different like bursts and particles and all that and they're already transparent so you don't have to do anything when you import them in which is super nice and like honestly super high quality so it just helps sell the effect and you can get super clean effects using this. Alright, so here's a clip I have right here what i'm gonna do first is rotoscope out our subject here and in this case it's a little oozy but uh what you want to do is just double click on your uh like layer here with the rotor brush selected up here and it should pop up a new window where you can uh apply your rotor brush to and i'm just going to go to the start of my frame here and make a rough outline around a little oozy here and it doesn't have to be perfect uh the rotor brush will try its best to make it kind of a good selection and as you can see it honestly didn't do too good and it's honestly pretty hard for this clip to know like what is a little oozy and what's the background because like this shirt right here it kind of like blends it with the background but i'm just gonna go ahead and fix up this rota brush and if you want to like deselect stuff just hold down all on your keyboard and you'll get that little like red cursor there so yeah just go along removing the brush adding the brush just trying to make it look super clean all right so i just finished rotoscoping out on my first frame here of a little oozy pretty clean not too bad uh also you do want to have your thing on full here for your resolution i forgot to say that at the start but just make sure this is on full here and i'm going to go ahead and change our quality to best it'll just make our rotoscope just a little bit better in quality uh, i don't know i feel like i can't really tell but you know it's best so why not use it but now i'm just going to go frame by frame making sure that the rotor brush does not mess up and that we have a good track all right, so I just went through all my frames, making sure that the rotor brush did a good job. And as you can see on this side right here, on the black composite, you can see that it's super clean around the edges. And there's a few mess ups like right here that I could fix up maybe. You know, it's just go and fix that up. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just hit freeze and it's gonna freeze your rotor brush so that it doesn't move around while you're editing and adding the shock waves. All right, so the rotor brush just got done freezing and you can just close out your layer right here, your composition. So now you're on your main comp. And now we just have our layer that is just row scoped out and we don't really have anything in the background. I'm gonna change the feather up here first to like 10 for the edges, just to smooth them out a little bit. We could even do like 14 or something. And what I'm gonna do now is duplicate this layer by hitting Control D on your keyboard. And you wanna obviously make sure your layer is selected. And on the bottom layer, you wanna go ahead and just delete the rotor brush because we wanna be able to actually see the background here. And on this top layer, let's just go ahead and disable the video so that only our bottom layer is here. And what we wanna go ahead and do is right click on our layer, track and stabilize, and hit track camera. Now what this is gonna do is analyze our background and track our camera and grab different points along the background and foreground so that we can uh, motion track our shockwave. And our 3D camera tracker just finished solving and it did its thing. So now, as you can see, there's tons of points along the video here and they're a little small so you can go up here track point size and just expand this so you can kind of see all the different points we have here and it is along our whole video looks good nothing uh, messed up you want to make sure you want to use the points in the background and not in the foreground like on your subject here so what i'm going to go ahead and do is select a good point on the fridge here maybe like these ones are here and you can kind of see like a red target pop up and that's how you know that you're selecting points and you just want to go ahead and uh right click that hit create null in camera so now it makes a camera for us and a null and our null is now tracked to that little spot right there on the fridge and what we want to go ahead and do now is add in our shockwave so i'm just going to drag in my shockwave 2 here it looks something like this but as you can see it is nothing special right now we haven't uh, actually done anything to it but the first thing we want to do is turn back on our layer of our rotoscope of lil uzi so we have our base our background the shockwave and a little uzi above that and then these two layers are here just a camera tracker and a null object but um yeah so still nothing special it's not tracked to anything but it is now behind little uzi so we're one step closer to the finished result what we want to do with the shockwave right here is just select this little cube this is basically making the layer 3d instead of having it 2d so once we click that it should make it into our 3d environment here and as you can see it is now tracked to the background we can open up our position values here by hitting p on our keyboard and you can move this around forward backward uh you can move it up and down you know just the basics uh you can also hit s on your keyboard opens up your scale you can just like make this huge now when i play that back 
you can kind of see how it, it gives off a cool explosion and it looks honestly like pretty real just like whole motion tracking looks really good with it and it kind of sells the effect and i honestly really like how that looks and another thing you can do with this is go up to your effects here and search up hue slash saturation and bring this onto your shockwave and you can mess with the master hue here and just like choose whatever color you like like we could do like something like this here now we have a totally different color here from the original one if we just toggle this like we can literally mess with anything we could totally customize it we could even keyframe it by going to our channel range here hitting the stopwatch and keyframing our color here just like moving this along and now we have our shockwave changing colors which is kind of cool. You guys can mess with that and make tons of different uh, styles here. And if you guys do want to add multiple shockwaves to this, it's super easy. Once again, just drag in your shockwave and you just want to toggle the 3D layer. And now as you can see, it's kind of like hidden behind this layer here. So if you open up your position values, the Z distance is what you want to move. And you can kind of see like once you move it forward, it pops up uh, to like the foreground. And an easier way to kind of see what's going on is if you hit the view panel right here, or there's a like little option. You can hit two views horizontal so now we can see the different layers here um if i zoom out a little bit this is our camera right here this is our shockwave right here and then this is our second shockwave you can kind of see where this uh, shockwave is placed so if i like move this around you can see that when i move it behind it it goes behind that shockwave so just keep that in front or in this case i'm going to keep it in front by moving this i like right there so now we are seeing that shockwave above our bottom one so then when i play this back you can see that it's all motion tracked and it's doing its thing we can move the scale position it differently this is one of my favorite shockwaves i really like how that looks so i like having that one in the front the last thing i like to do is turn on motion blur so on these two shockwaves right here we can just turn on the motion blur so now when we play that back it's kind of subtle, you can't really tell, but there is now motion blur, so it kind of looks a bit more realistic. The on and off, you can kind of see there. That's pretty much it for the shockwave effect. Obviously, you can do a lot of other stuff with the shockwaves, move them around, you can like rotate them, make them look all crazy like this, like put them in different positions, play that, you know. Get creative with it. Just mess with the effects, get what you're looking for. And yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy this tutorial. And if you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.